everybody. So today's lesson is about exponential functions. Um, we're going to really focus on reviewing last year's exponential fun or sorry, Math 1's exponential functions, how to graph them, some, some key features of them. Uh, because tomorrow we're going to talk about really how to graph the inverse of exponential functions. Um, which is the point of this unit. Um, but in order to graph inverses of exponentials, we really need to um, review and make sure that we're comfortable with graphing exponential functions and what their features are. Okay. Um, so the warm up I'll do with you guys, or you can pause it, try it on your own, and then check your answers. Uh, they're both just inverse functions. Um, trying them on your own might be a good idea because it has been a couple days um, since we did it on Friday. Um, so when we are solving for inverse functions, remember that we switch the variables and then we solve for y. So f of x is y, so it becomes x. So this would be x equals y plus 11 squared minus 5. Okay, and then to get at y and to solve for y, we undo every operation. So we're going to add 5 to both sides. So this is x plus 5 equals y plus 11 squared. Since this started as a quadratic function with it being squared, that means to undo it, we would have a square root function. So to undo this, we square root both sides, um, which gives us the square root of x plus 5 equals y plus 11. Remember, uh, remember when we take a square root, we have plus or minus. However, if you remember back to what we talked about on Friday, when we take a plus or minus, um, it's not a function if we graph a square root function plus or minus. So just a real quick review. This one um, would be here starting. The positive square root would do this, and the negative square root would do this, which is your sideways quadratic. But if I were to try the vertical line test, it wouldn't pass. Oops, it would hit twice. So it's no longer a function. So even though it is plus or minus with the square root, I actually want to restrict the domain. And I always just take the positive. Um, that way, when I have to do it for word problems, I don't have to worry about the negative not making sense. Okay. So my last step is going to be to subtract 11. And I'm just going to write this in the right notation. So we should always be saying um, the inverse of f of x, written like this, equals. And then since it's plus, I don't have to write anything. I'm just going to say the square root of x plus 5 and then plus 11. Okay, and it should always be written in this notation, just like up here where it was something squared minus 5. Then down here, it's the square root of something plus 11. So this is my answer. Okay, please make sure you're writing it in the right notation, f inverse of x. All right, let's try another one. Um, over here, we're talking about a cube root. So then the inverse function is going to be a cubic function, since that's what un undoes a cube root. All right, so first I'm going to switch variables, and I'm going to say x equals 8 times the cube root of y plus 12. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is subtract 12 from both sides. All right, so next I need to get rid of the coefficient, so I'm going to divide by 8. Divide by 8. Um, you can leave your answer as x minus 12 over 8. Typically, we don't see your answer like that, so I'm going to show you what you would see Um you would typically see it written like this, where we would say 1x or just x. I'm just going to write x. x over 8 uh, minus 12 over 8 can be simplified. If we divide by 4, it would be 3 over 2 equals the cube root of y. Okay, and then let's come over here. In order to undo this, I cube. So I cube this whole quantity. So my answer is going to be the inverse of x equals um, x over 8. We could see like that. We could also see it as 1 over 8x like this, minus 3 over 2, and this whole quantity being squared. Okay, You could leave it like, if you guys wanted to write it as x minus 12 over 8 cubed. Oops, sorry, cubed, not squared, cubed. Um, that would be okay, too. Either of those is fine. Okay, so this would be my answer or what's down below. All right, so let's get into today's. Um, graph f of x equals 2 to the x and its inverse. Um, I'm going to create a table of values to help with this, and that's what we're actually going to do a lot in this unit is create tables of values. So I'm going to say x and y 
Here's my table. We don't need a ton of points, but I'm going to start with 0 and 1 and 2. And then I'll have negative 1 and negative 2. Okay, I want to graph as much as falls on my graph, so we'll kind of see where these fall. So if I evaluate, um, this would mean that I would say 2 to the 0 power, which is 1. 2 to the first power, which is 2. 2 squared, which is 4. Okay, I'm substituting into my function right now. Um, and then the negatives, remember, are just in, or sorry, are reciprocals of the positive value. So negative 1 and 1, if this value is a 2, then the reciprocal of that would be 1 half. Okay, remember that's saying 2 to the negative first power, which is saying that you flip it, so 1 over 2 to the positive first. Okay, same thing for the negative 2. 2 to the second is 4, so the reciprocal of that is 1 fourth. Okay, remember the negative does not make it negative, it does not make the answer negative, it flips the answer. Okay, so if I graph this, I'm going to be at negative 2, 1 4, so right about there. Negative 1, 1 half, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 4. Okay, I'm going to see if 3 fits. 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, so it does fit. I'm going to graph that. So 3 to the 8th, okay? All right, I could continue going left, but what's going to happen is if you remember, there's an asymptote. So my function will look like this, and this is my function f of x, so I want to label it as such. Okay, this has an asymptote right here, which is at y equals 0. Okay, now I'm going to take my function and I'm going to do the inverse of it. So the inverse means that my new x and y are going to be flipped from what they were over here. So now y and x become, uh, y becomes x and x becomes y. So now this would be 1 fourth, negative 2. This is 1 half over, neg or sorry, 1 half negative 1. 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2, and 8, 3. Okay, so I'm going to graph those coordinates. So 1 fourth negative 2 puts me about here. 1 half negative 1 puts me here. 1, 0. 2, 1. 4, 2. And 8, 3. Okay, and if you notice with this one, it has an asymptote as well. But notice that the asymptote is here. Okay, so now this asymptote is vertical at x equals 0. Okay, so remember, inverses, everything flips. So if x becomes y and y becomes x, then that means that all of its other key features flip as well. So because this has an asymptote that is horizontal, then it would make sense that its inverse would have an asymptote that is vertical. Opposite of horizontal is vertical, opposite of vertical is horizontal. Okay, notice that if I were to draw in this line right here, this line y equals x, that they do in fact reflect over that line, which just again proves that they are inverses of each other. This one I want to label as my inverse function. Okay, we always want to label which one is which. Okay, so let's talk about some notation. The general form of an exponential function is a times b to the x minus h plus k. Notice that we're bringing back in that hk for, uh, notation. Um, the notation h and k is what helps us determine how the graph is translated. So notice it's x minus h. So h comma k is how it's translated. Okay, meaning that if this was a, a times b to the x minus 3 plus 5, this would be translated right 3 up 5. Okay, How does, uh, what does k do to the graph? So this k value right here moves, moves every point, but more importantly, it moves the asymptote. So A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T. So it moves the asymptote um, either up or down if it's exponential. Tomorrow we'll talk about how it moves it left or right since it's a vertical graph, but today up and down. So if it's positive, it moves our graph up. If it's po negative, it moves our graph down. Okay, so we're actually going to use that in number four. It says which graph is being represented by, and we have three functions. All right. 
notice that in this one, it's just 2 to the x. There is no k value, whereas this one is minus 3 and this one is minus 4. So I'm just going to write in here that this is plus 0. Okay, so that means my asymptote is at y equals 0. This one is at minus 3, so y equals negative 3. And this one is at minus 4, so y equals negative 4. So the easiest way to match these up, I think, is to go through and say, okay, well, here's my asymptote. That's at y equals 0. Here's my asymptote, which is down there at y equals negative 4. Here's my asymptote, which is at y equals negative 3. So now I can pretty easily go uh, match these. So y equals 0 matches with the first function. So this would be f of x equals 2 to the x power, which I should notice looks exactly like the graph that I graphed up above. This one looks like f of x equals, and since it's got an asymptote at negative 4, it's got to be the last function, which would be 2 to the x minus 3 minus 4. This one would be f of x equals the middle function, 2 to the x minus 3. Since it was So notice in this one, the asymptote was pulled down 3, down 4, and down nothing. Okay? Notice also that these are also all the uh, growth, because our base is 2, which means it's doubling. Doubling is growth, so these are going up. Okay? If this was like 1 half, so if I had like 1 half to the x power, and my function would look like this because it would be decaying. Okay. If I added a negative onto this, then it would be reflecting. Uh, sorry, it would be reflected, so it would actually look like this. All right. So let's go over to the back side. All right, so now we're going to graph two functions. So first I'm going to start off with the notation of the transformation. So this is what you guys actually tested on already. So the transformation would be x plus 1, opposite of what's here. And then that 3 is my a value. So 3 times my y minus 4. So notice it's 3. This whole thing counts as my y because that's the operation. And then minus 4. Okay. My domain and range I'm going to come back to once I graph it. My asymptote, I know that it is a horizontal asymptote which means it's got to be at y equals negative 4, since that value right here is my k value. Okay, very important. And then my y-intercept, I'm going to actually substitute uh, 0 in to see what it would be. So this would be 3 times 2. If I substitute in 0, remember y-intercept is always a value of 0, I would get 0 minus 1, which is negative 1, minus 4. So... Three, uh, 2 to the negative first power, remember, treat it like it's positive. So 2 to the first is 2, so then the reciprocal is 1 half minus 4. So 3 times 1 half is 3 halves, or 1.5 minus 4, which is negative 2.5. Okay, we're actually going to be doing all of this without a calculator. Okay, so I get this. All without a calculator means that we have to come up with these points, and we can't just plug it into our calculator. So I'm going to make a table of values actually to help me. So I'm going to start <clears throat> similar to how I did before, where I start with 0 in the middle, and 1 and 2. I'm going to write 3 in just in case it fits, and then I'm going to do negative 1 and negative 2. Okay, so if I go in and evaluate, I'm substituting 0 in. Well, I already know that if I substitute 0 in, I'm going to get negative 2.5. Okay, and then I'm going to substitute 1 in. So if I come over here, 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 to the 0 power is 1. Times 3 is 3. Okay, if you need to write all this out, you can. So it's just 3 times 2. 1 minus 1 was 0. Minus 4. So 2 to the 0 is 1. Times 3 is 3. 3 minus 4 is a negative 1. Okay, and I'm going to do it again for 2. So if I substitute a 2 in, 2 minus 1 makes this now a 1. So 2 to the first is 2, times 3 is 6. 6 minus 4 gives me a 2. Okay, if I substitute a 3 in, that makes this now a 2. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. Okay, so those all fit. Okay, now um, when I substitute negative 1 in... Um, I'm going to go back to here, so then it becomes 3 times 2, 
uh, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2 minus 4. Okay. <clears throat> so remember, treat this as if it's positive. So 2 squared is 4, which means then this is 1 fourth. Three times one fourth is three fourths, or you can write maybe 0.75 would help, minus four. So the difference of these is 3.25, so it would be negative, so negative 3.25. The nice part is you really don't need all these because watch what's going to happen. When I know that my asymptote is at y equals negative four, I'm going to come here and I'm put my asymptote in, so I'm going to put a dashed line in here. When I go to graph, I'm going to graph the points that I know. So I know 0, negative 2.5, so that would be right here. Um, 1, negative 1, 2, 2, uh, 3, 8. Okay, I can see the general shape of this. So when I go negative 1, 3.25, I know that it's about here. I don't really need to know my other points. I can see that it's going to do this. It's going to approach that asymptote. So there's my function, okay? So my domain, I can see my domain is talking about my x values. So this function goes all the way left towards positive infinity. It goes all the way right towards positive, or sorry, negative and positive infinity. So that would be my domain, all the way left, all the way right. Range is talking about my height. Well, the lowest that it gets is it's approaching negative four, but it never hits it. So I'm gonna put parentheses around it, not brackets. And then it's going to go all the way up towards positive infinity, parentheses around that as well. Okay, so that's my function. Let's try it again. All right, so first my transformation. Um, since it's x plus 2, it means that I'm taking all my x values and moving left to. And then negative 3y plus 1. So the 3 is, uh, the negative 3 is going to reflect it. Okay. Um, my domain, I'm going to wait. My range, I'm going to wait. My asymptote is this value right here. So my asymptote is going to be at y equals 1 since it just got shifted up 1 from 0. Okay, it's always at 0 unless otherwise moved. Okay, my y-intercept is going to be 0, and then I'm going to go substitute that in right now. So if I substitute a 0 in, this will be negative 3 times 1 half. 0 plus 2 is to the second power plus 1. Okay, so this will be negative 3, 1 half to the second power, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, I get that, which gives me negative 3 fourths or negative 0 0.75 plus 1, sometimes writing it as a decimal helps us, um, so negative 0 0.75 plus 1 is 0 0.25, so 0 0.25, okay, so I'm going to plot that right now, 0, 0 0.25 would be right about there, oops, sorry, positive. 0 0.25, I'm right about there, okay? I'm also going to put in my asymptote. I know that my asymptote is at this right here, so that means my whole function must be below that since I can't cross it and go above it. All right, I'm going to create a table of values. So I'm going to say x, I'm going to say y. Oops, y. I'm going to put 0 in the middle, say 0, 1, 2, 3, just in case all of them fit, and then negative 1, negative 2. Okay, I already know that 0 is at 0 0.25, so let's try 1. I'm going to come over here, so this will be negative 3 times 1 half. If I substitute a 1 in, it becomes a 3 plus 1. Okay, so then that means it's negative 3. 1 to the third is 1. 2 to the third is 8 plus 1. Okay, so I actually get some pretty ugly numbers here. I'm going to get negative 3 eighths plus 1. Um, so that would be negative 3 eighths plus 8 over 8, which is 5 eighths. So since that's not a very nice number, I'm not going to continue with these. I'm actually going to go to the other direction and do some negatives. So I'm going to make this negative 1, So which means that this is negative 3 times 1 half. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1 plus 1. So that means that this is just one half to the first, which is just one half. So that means that this is negative three over two plus one. That's negative one point five plus one, so negative one half. Notice that that value wasn't too bad. So I'm actually going to get a better value um, with negative two. So I'm going to say negative three to the one half. Negative two plus two is zero. 
and put them to the zero powers of one. So one times negative three is negative three. Negative three plus one is negative two. So I'm going to plot those and see if I can get a general shape of my graph. So negative two, negative two would be here. Um, negative one, negative one half is here. Okay, I can see that I'm going to follow this right here. I'm going to go down. Um, I'm going to actually, I'm going to evaluate for negative three. So I'm going to stick a negative three right here. So if I substitute in a negative three, negative three plus two is negative one. So watch what happens. I get a negative one here plus one. So if I take one half and raise it to the first, I get one half, but the negative means I flip it, which gives me a two. So two times negative three is negative six, plus one is negative five. And I can graph that. So negative three, negative five. Negative three, negative five puts me here, and that's enough to see that the general shape is going like this. So there's my function. Okay, I can see that the domain is going to go all the way left and all the way right. All exponential functions go all the way left and all the way right. Their range is what gets affected because of their asymptote. So it goes all the way down to negative infinity, but it goes up to 1, and it does not touch it, so I have to have a one uh, parentheses there. Okay, so there is going to be some evaluating, um, but we haven't used our calculator in a while, so hopefully it's not too bad. Okay, now we are going to use our calculator. So make sure that you know when you're graphing, you're going to be expected to not use your calculator. That will be in a non-calc portion, whereas this is going to be in a calc portion. Um, if you think back to math one, you had a compound interest um, equation. It was y equals a times 1 plus r over n raised to the nt. Okay, so let's dissect this. Y is talking about your um, result or your ending amount. Oops, result. Um, A is talking about your principal. Sometimes that can be referred to as a P2. Principal or your initial value, same thing. Um, your R value is your rate, which is always written as a percent. Um, sorry, written as a decimal, usually given as a percent. Your n is your number of times compounded. And your t is your number of years. Okay, always number of years. Uh, because when we talk about number of times compounded, it's talking about how many in a year is it compounded. So things that would be like, um, and actually I put them down here so that we would see them, so we'll talk about them. Okay, so this you can absolutely use a calculator for. Um, so, oops. Uh, you deposit $10,000 in an account that pays 8% annual interest, so that 8% would be written as 0 0.08. Okay. Find the balance after two years for each of the following situations. So I'm going to set up an equation for each of these. I'm going to say y equals... I start with 10,000 times 1. The reason that's 1 is 100% plus, um, I don't know why I told you 8% here. Sorry, cross off the 8%. We're going to do the percent that's in each of these problems. So 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by, I'm looking for the number of times compounded. If it says that it's compounded quarterly, think about how many quarters are in a dollar. So there's four of them. And then I would raise this to the 4, so the NT, so to the 4, and then this is going to be in here for 2 years. So to the 4 times 2. Okay. I'm going to come over here and write this equation out. It's going to be Y equals 10,000 as well, times 1 plus. My rate now is, so when we have a decimal with percents, it's always a little bit harder. Think about this as just 1%. I would write 1% like this. So then that extra 8.5, I just add on to the end. Okay. And then monthly, how many months are in a year? There are 12 of them. So it gets compounded 12 times a year. And then I'm going to raise this to the 12 times 2. So that means it happens 24 times. Okay. I'm going to do it again. So y equals 10,000 times 1 plus my rate 4.25. Again, I'm going to treat it like it's 4%. So that's 4%. And then I just tack on the extra 2.5. Um, annually, there's only, annually is always talking about once, once in a year. 
So then I would raise this to the 1 times 2. Okay. Okay, so you should be getting out your calculator right now so that you can make sure that you get the same thing as me, but it's fairly simple. Don't put it in pieces in your calculator. Just put it in exactly the way that it's written. Um, the nice part is you don't need a ton of parentheses uh, because your calculator will actually do order of operations, which it'll do the division first anyways. If you have the older calculator, um, you're going to need to put parentheses around this. I would always just, you know, do in your head 4 times 2 is 8. That way you don't have to worry about um, putting it in wrong. Okay. I'm actually going to do... Write that down. So, um, about 10615 so $10,615, we're going to round always to two decimal places, so $0.99. Cents. Okay. Um, we're going to do it again for the next equation. I'm actually going to hit enter and just kind of re-enter this. Um, so it's going to be 0 0.0185 divided by 12. And I'm going to raise that to the 24th. So I get 10, 376, and 63 cents. So, so far, the first one has more money. All right. I hit second enter, and I'm going to go back. 0 0.0425 divided by 1. And I'm going to raise it to the second. So this one shouldn't be that good. Oh, actually, it is. Oh, it's because it's such a high percentage. Okay. Um, so 10,868. 868. And six cents. Oops. All right. So given my options for investing in two years, um, typically, whichever one is compounded the most is your best bet, but this one was compounded four times, but at 3%. This one was compo compounded the most at 12, but only at 1.85%. And this one, even though it was only compounded once, had the highest rate. Um, if we did this for a longer period of time, you would notice that the compounded quarterly or monthly would actually end up being better. It would just take a long time to get there. So this is the better option. Okay. Um, your homework. Um, it's going to start with some matching, and then you guys are going to do some graphing, but you're not going to do too much. Um, I had you do your y-intercept and asymptote here so you could really focus on those key features. Anytime that you do a y-intercept, you're going to have to do it by substituting in zero, all of which should be done without a calculator. Okay, I have one graphing problem here for you, and then one on the back, so only two. This part, number 14 and number 15, are the only ones that you should be using a calculator for. Okay, um, and just a word of advice, when you're trying to match these, everybody's going to have a different method, uh, but sometimes substituting in a value is the easiest method. So for instance, like part A, I would look at this and say, well, that's plus zero, so that's my asymptote, but there's a lot of graphs that has, have an asymptote at zero, like this one, like this one, like this one. Okay, some of the things you can look for are growth versus decay. If that's tripling, that's growth. If this is 0.25, that's decay. 0.5, that's decay. Anything less than 1 is decay. This is growth. This is growth. Um, this is uh, decay. This is growth. Okay. Um, other things. So, like, to me, I would look at that one that's 3x minus 2, and I might come to, like, a graph like this and say, hey, this is y-intercept, or sorry, an asymptote at 0, so evaluate. So this coordinate's 2, 1. Well, if I come up here and I substitute in a 2, 2 minus 2 is 0, 3 to the 0 power is 1, 1 plus 0 is 0. So if I substitute in a 2, I just got out a 1, which is that coordinate down here. So then I'm going to substitute a 3 in and see what I get. So if I substitute a 3 in, 3 minus 2 is 1, 3 to the first is 3, 3 plus 0 is 3. So notice that I got the coordinate. So then that means that A would go with number 5. Okay? 
All right, the rest is for you to do. I will be in tomorrow morning if you guys have any questions. Good luck. Thank you.